Tell you where we left off. <laughs> Pardon me for that short intermission. Check this out. This is the second part to Metro 1313. Here we go. No need for a long drawn out introduction. Section 0.286B, Section 3. The council shall coordinate by consultation or otherwise, so far as practical, the policies and operations of the representative of the United States on the fund in the bank. The Ex-Import Bank of the United States and all other agencies of government to the extent that they participate in the making of foreign loans or engage in foreign aid financial, exchange or monetary transactions, emphasis is mine. This is clear evidence that Metro through Council controls any and all aspects of agencies of government that deal with foreign exchange or monetary issues. Section 286B, Section B, Subsection 4. Whenever under the Articles of Agreement of the Fund or the Articles of Agreement of the Bank, the approval, consent, or agreement of the United States is required before an act may be done by the respective institutions. The decisions as to whether such approval, consent, or agreement shall be given or refused shall be made by the Council under general direction of the President. Emphasis mine. Do you see that we have an administrative board over which President sits? as the head controlling, approving, or disapproving the United States say in financial matters. No governor, executive director, or alternate representing the United States shall vote in favor of any waiver or condition under Article 4, Section 4, or in favor of de any declaration of the United States dollar as a scarce currency under Article 8, Section 3 of the Articles of Agreement of the Fund, Section 7, Article 7, without prior approval of the Council. There you have it. Friends, this is the organization of government you so much heard of but have been unable to find. The Metro organization is the financial head of the octopus that works in collusion with the United States, the Royal Institute of Foreign Affairs, the Council of Foreign Relations, the Builder Group, the Committee of 300, City of London, and on and on. The elusive governor is so liberally mentioned, the UCC and IMP are the governors of the 50 states under direction and control of the Metro's Governance Conference. In other words, Metro. The government of this nation at all levels is held captive and in terror of these organizations. But there is one more aspect that must be looked at and all put together once and for all. The protocols of the learned elders of Zion have been called a forgery since their coming into public view in 1905. Earlier reading was 1701. The following is some excerpts. You decide what to think after reading what has been presented here. Protocol number five. What form of administrative rule can be given to communities in which corruption has penetrated everywhere? Communities where riches are attained only by clever surprise tactics of semi-swindling tricks where looseness reigns, where morality is maintained by penal measures and harsh laws, but not by voluntary accepted principles, where the feelings toward faith and country are obliterated by cosmopolitan convictions. What form of rule is to be given to these, if not of that of despotism? which I shall describe to you in later. Moreover, the art of directing the masses and individuals by means of cleverly manipulated theory and verbiage, by regulations of life and common in all sorts of other quirks, in which all the goyim understand nothing, belongs likewise to the specialists of our administrative brain. Emphasis mine. Protocol number eight. We must arm ourselves with all the weapons of which our opponents might employ against us. We must search out the very finest shades of expression and the naughty points of the lexicon of law justification. For those cases where we should have to pronounce judgments that might appear abnormally audacious and unjust, for it is important that these resolutions should be set forth in expressions that shall seem to be the most exalted moral principles cast into legal form. Protocol number nine. We have got in our hands the administration of law into being the conduct of elections, into the press, into liberty of the person. 
but principally into education and training as being the cornerstone of free existence, above all the existing laws without substantially altering them and by merely twisting them into contradictions of interpretations. We have erected something grandiose in the way of results. These results found expression first in the fact that the interpretation masked the law. Afterwards, they entirely hide them from the eyes of governments owing to the impossibility of making anything out of the web of legislation. If it makes you feel uncomfortable yet, we can still go further. Protocol number 15. Under our influence, the execution of laws of the Goyam have been reduced to a minimum. The prestige of the law has been exploded by liberal institutions and their interpretations introduced into the sphere. In most important and fundamental affairs and questions, judges decide as we dictate to them, see matters in light, wherewith we unfold them for the administration of the Goyam, of course, through persons who are our tools, though we educate them and do not appear to have anything in common with them. And these days, the judges of the Goyam create indulgences to every kind of crime, not having an understanding of their office because of the rulers of the present age and appointing judges to office take no care to inculcate them in a sense of duty and consciousness of the matter which is demanded of them. Protocol number 15. I'll leave off there. Stay tuned. Coming next. <laughs> In the dark, people. <laughs>